All right, this time I'd like to call the second hearing, public hearing for um, talking about our uh, DPNL energy. And our representative from DPNL Energy will. Sheriff Schroeder will Sheriff Schroeder will introduce and, and let everyone know what's going on. So I'll leave the floor to you. Okay. I'm just going to stand from this direction as opposed to the microphone. So just let me know if you can't hear me. That way I won't have to turn my back to you to face the microphone. Um, but some of you, this may be reviewed because we had a meeting uh, just over the weekend over the holiday. So some of you have heard some of this before, but I'll repeat it in case there's some folks who weren't here. Um, but DPL Energy is offering a proposal to the village which would bundle the supply of electricity that we would provide you um, at a discounted rate from the current DP NL prices um, to cover the cost so that it covers the cost of street lighting. As I understand it, you have um, budget constraints that don't allow um, to continue the existing contract that DPL Energy has for street lighting. Um, and so that was the original concern. And so what we've done is we've created two agreements. One agreement will be for street lighting. It'll outline all the costs. But then it will say, as long as we have an agreement to provide the supply for the village at discounted rates, then we'll waive all of the costs for street lighting. Um, and then on the supply agreement with us, it'll be a three-year supply contract for discounted service to everyone in the village. And that will be all residential customers in the village and all small commercial customers in the village. And that will be at a discounted rate, depending on how much energy that you use, would be anywhere between 20 and 30 percent discount from the current DP Endel price. And what we've estimated is that for the entire village that would be over $365,000 of savings. That's a combined savings of the 20 to 30% average estimate of discount for each residence and the $17,000 waiving in fees for the street lighting. That's the total cost um, of annual savings, $365,000 is what we estimated in total. Um, so that's kind of a high level. Um, I've had a couple of folks that have called me um, since the last meeting to ask a few questions, and I welcome that. And I'll leave my card here. And I've also got a list here of kind of maybe what we think might be typical questions. And feel free to take one of the handouts. Uh, we talked last time also about maybe trying to spread the word to make sure there's no confusion. And so I've tried to print out lots of extras. So if folks want to either hand them out to other friends or neighbors or post them somewhere, that might be appropriate. Uh, where others can see it. Um, I've tried to give copies of that. Last time also there were a couple of questions about how to contact DPL Energy. Should somebody have another question or something going forward, maybe six months, six months from now, I've added on that form the DPL Energy. Um, it's actually an 888 number. But it's like an 800 number to call toll free uh, for any questions that you may have. So I've added that to our list. Um, the only other thing that we talked about um, today was that some of you may have heard that the Preble County Commissioners are all working currently with a broker to try to broker a deal for some of the other communities in Preble County. Um, that deal is separate from this proposal. Um, it's not clear yet who they are going to choose. The broker that's working with them is accepting bids from a number of suppliers, including DPL Energy. So it's possible they'll select DPL Energy. It's possible they'll select another supplier. If they select a different supplier, then this program, their program, would not be available to the folks in this village because we'll have already signed a contract with you. If for some reason that broker chooses DPL Energy for the other communities, then certainly it would be something that would be open that you could be available for. Um, but this one is specific um, to this community. Um, and I'm feel free to answer questions if anyone has. Okay. Like I would I would remind everyone that if you have questions, please come to the podium, state your name and address, so that we'll have record of this, not only for ourselves, but for DPNL Energy. One thing I didn't mention um, today, I think I clarified on Saturday, is that everyone will have an opportunity to opt out. So if you're a residential customer or you have a business of a certain size, that it's actually 700,000 kWh a year, so basically you're kind of a small commercial industrial customer, you'll be automatically enrolled into the program at the discounted rate. If you have for some reason do not want to be in the program, you'll have a right to opt out. 
what we're, we intend to do is once we get a list of everyone in the community, we will send out notices. And you can take that notice and mail it or call in that you want out. You don't want to end the program. For whatever reason, you can opt out. Um, and then what we'll do is every quarter, we'll get an updated list. So if anyone's moving in, moving out, folks that may have rental units have different people coming in and out. So at those times, each quarter, we'll have a new list and we'll send out another opportunity. And at that time, someone new to the community could opt in and say, hey, I want into that program. Or if you already have a different supplier today, and so you don't want to terminate your contract early with that supplier and have a potential fee from them, what you could do is opt out of our program today until yours <coughs> ends, and then at that time call our 800 toll-free number and let us know that you're interested in opting in to the program. Is there any questions for Sharon? <coughs> I do have one question. Uh, did you sure. find anything else about the level billing from DPNL or? Absolutely. We checked on some of the details about the budget billing. Um, right now, DPNL um, will not be able to provide budget billing uh, for anyone who has supply from an alternate supplier. So um, that's going to be the case with DPL Energy, with whoever the broker Palmer, as an example. Um, would select with any other supplier. If you've already chosen another supplier, you may have noticed that already that's not, um, you're not able to have that budget bill continue today. However, DP Endel does have a commitment to provide the ability for budget billing for any supplier, and that'll begin in the summer. Um, so if that's a, a very big concern for you, you'll just have to weigh your option. You can opt out for now, and then decide once the budget billing is available that you'd like in the program. Um, and we're glad to have you um, join the program after that. And what we'll do, in fact, I was going to ask tonight maybe for some feedback, um, the best way to notify the community when budget billing is available. We can send out mailers to let you know. You know, I can come to another meeting or just let you guys know. But whatever is the best method to get the word out once we know for sure budget billing is available, we expect it to be in the summer then folks would know and they can call us and let us know then, okay, now I would like in. So you can hold off until that point if that's your preference. Just be aware that, let's say for three months, you'll be opting out of the program so you won't get that savings for those three or four months. And then you would get the savings after you join. So it's kind of a trade-off about the budget bill level amount compared to the savings that you would have received in the program. Do you have any idea what the budget billing rate is now? The budget billing rate is actually different for every Everybody for, for everyone. Household. It depends on their household um, usage. So, as an example, if if my house uses electricity and my bill typically runs around ninety dollars, it could be that it's always ninety dollars and I'm on budget bill. Or if I got off a of budget bill, maybe one month it's forty five and then it's fifty, sixty, and then maybe in the winter I have electric heat and it's you know, 140. It's going to vary, but it's actually calculated specific to the person at that home or at that business if they have that option. Um, so it's specific to that. And the, the nice thing is it's kind of convenient the timing because typically most folks use less energy in the spring. So when this program is expected to begin, the discount's expected to kick in in March. And that's just based on the timing it takes us to get everything completed and the agreements filed with the Ohio Commission that we expect the program to begin in March. So the discounts would kick in in March, and so if you lost your budget bill level amount in March, it's very likely that you've already caught up for the usage in the winter or the summer. That may have been higher, and actually in March, your bill may drop from the level billing. So in my example, my $90 bill that I pay all year long, maybe in March I would only have to pay 50 because I just don't use very much in the spring, in March and April. And by the time June comes, and I'm using a lot more for my air conditioning, by then the budget bill would kick in and have a level amount for you. So the timing is actually quite convenient, because we expect this to, to be in place in the spring. And then with the discount, it'll be slightly lower than what you've seen in the past. And so if you walked into it now, then you can still get on the budget billing program when it's offered? Correct. Okay, Whether you opt in, in what you're doing now. That's correct. Whether you, whether you stay in the program or want to wait for the budget billing, once the budget billing is available, it will be available to everyone. 
Could we have a village press that goes out once a month here that's passed out by Mr. Hadstad? That would be the way for me okay, to that'd be correlate, to correlate ops and units that we Right. We wouldn't want to kind of bombard everyone who yeah. either doesn't care about it or already opted out and doesn't want to hear again. Um, but we just want to make sure that we get the word out for folks that are interested that we can get them on budget bill at that time. We can put it in the village press the month before the court has to do that way they know 30 days ahead of time. Yep, that's yeah. perfect. That's is there any other questions? Well, we certainly want to thank Sharon Schroeder and then GPML Energy for working with our village because it's, uh, it's, a, it's a very good opportunity for the, for the residents to save money and for the village to stay lit. And uh, we appreciate the, uh, their offer very much. And we want to thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you. Thank you. No thank other you questions. <laughs> No other questions will end the public hearing. And now I will call to order an emergency meeting on behalf of the village. Roll call Mary Jane Thomas. Here. Joe Bartle. Absent. Dallas Abrams. Absent. Rick Van Winkle. Here. Pearl Mullins. Here. Jeannie Davies. Here. I will at this time read the ordinance. That all of you have in front of you. Ordinance 2011-13. Ordinance 2011-13 authorizing the New Paris Village Council to act as purchasing agent and governmental aggregator for electric power for the Village of New Paris and declare an emergency. The Council of the Village of New Paris, Brown County, Ohio, met in uh, second session on the 28th day of 2011 and Council Chambers for the following members present. Rick Van Winkle, Earl Mullins, Jeannie Davies and Mary Jane Thomas. Whereas on November 8, 2011, the residents of the village of New Paris voted in favor of electric aggregation to improve purchasing leverage and offer reduced electrical generation rates to residential and small business consumers. And whereas the council of the village of New Paris have offered their services to act on behalf of the village of New Paris, Brevo <coughs> County, as a governmental aggregator. And whereas having one centralized aggregator will provide for the most expeditious manner to handle any issues arising in the process of electrical application. Therefore, be it ordained, Section 1 of the New Paris Village Council is hereby authorized, authorized to act as a governmental agent for purchasing and aggregation of electric power for the residents of New Paris, Provo County, Ohio. Section 2 of this ordinance shall be copied to the Board of Provo County Commissioners, 101 East Main Street, Eagle Hunt, 45320. In Section 3, it is found and determined that all formal actions of this council concerning and related to the adoption of this ordinance were so adopted in an open meeting of this council and that all formal actions were in meetings open to the public in compliance with all legal requirements. That being said, I need a motion to accept ordinance 2011-13. I'll make a motion to accept ordinance 2011-13. Is there a second? Okay. Roll call, Mary Jane Thomas. Yes. Rick Van Winkle. Yes. Earl Wallace. Yes. Jeannie Davies. Yes. I move that we uh, uh, move as the mercy and wait for three reading rule. Three reading rule on August 2011 17. Is there a second on the motion? Second. Roll call. Mary Jane Thomas. Yes. Rick Van Winkle. Yes. Earl Wallace. Yes. Jeannie Davies. Yes. Yeah. So adopted. Now I need a motion to accept the contract between. DPML Energy, correct? Mm -hmm. And the Village Council, unless there's any other discussion by Council. I uh, make a motion that we uh, accept the uh, uh, contract and agreement with uh, DPML Energy for the Village Members. Second. Okay. Roll call. Mary Jane Thomas. Yes. Jeannie Davies. Yes. Earl Wallens. Yes. Rick Van Winkle. Yes. So moved. That being said, and that being done, I need a motion to I make a motion to adjourn. adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 So moved. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Aaron. Thank you very much.